welcome to All About Hopkinton, the HKM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. Today we have with us Lauren Dubow, the principal of Center School. Lauren, welcome. Thank you very much. For Thank being you for here. having me. Well, I know you're no stranger to being on uh, All About Hopkinton. I think it was just a couple of days after you accepted the position of being principal that they had you on the show here with Jim Cousins. And so I really appreciate that you've come back and give us a little update, especially now with all the excitement of the new center school. Got approved, we got the land, looks like we got a plan. Do you have any uh, updates you can share with us? Certainly. Uh, we are moving forward at a wonderful pace. We have a terrific, dynamic elementary school building committee that's comprised of community members, selectmen, school department members, so it's a well-rounded committee. And we are now in the schematic phase, which means we're getting to the details, what's the building design going to look like. And there's actually a joint meeting Wednesday at Town Hall, so it's the school committee and the board of selectmen sort of to present where we are with that design process and everything after our meetings is posted online. HCAM records the meeting, so if mm -hmm. community members are unable to attend the meetings, there's a way that they can be informed of um, the different steps and progress along the way. Are they giving you a time frame again as to maybe what school year will start in the new school? The target at this time is 2018. That is oh. construction, that is there would be a special vote uh, for the town this fall to vote on this is the design. Mm -hmm. uh, we made the hurdle as you mentioned in terms of the land and where the school would be and then the community would come forth to cast their ballot on okay here is the building, here is the design um, for that. So ideally if we had a winter such as this past winter that mm -hmm. might delay things a bit because mm -hmm. construction obviously would be um, you know commence soon after that and hopefully the weather would be in our favor. Well I think I saw a preliminary design and I remember seeing a flat roof and after the winter we had and I said oh no they better pitch that roof. A little there harder. is so much discussion <laughs> so actually this winter was a great winter for us to then have these conversations yeah. of the reasoning behind structures, angles, how you navigate uh, weather conditions, materials so there are some pretty um, intense discussions with all of these factors. I'm learning mm -hmm. more about buildings than I've ever um, in, known before in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, being principal is demanding enough, and now you've got a plan for the new school and everything. How are you managing all these responsibilities? It is. Each day you look at what's ahead, what's the following week, you schedule, you organize and prioritize what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And that's how I keep track of myself is making sure that I'm organized because there are so many different facets of the day, making sure you're interacting with children, staff and parents, meetings such as the building committee. They are also very important in mm -hmm. how um, I work on my days to ensure that they all have that attention. And based on different days and what's coming up, something might have a little bit more attention than another, and I work on balancing that out. You maintain, maintain some flexibility in that schedule, I imagine. Exactly. <laughs> you, flexibility is a must, um, mm -hmm. especially at our level in terms of you never know what your day might bring. You have an anticipated plan mm -hmm. and something might happen, a delay with the weather as I mentioned this past winter, or um, something else comes up that needs your attention. And um, that's, that's part of the excitement of the job as well is every day is something new. Mm -hmm. Well I imagine in part of your day at some point you talk about safety and security because that's so important. Well it's always been important but it's even more emphasized now in schools. So what can you share with us about safety and security at Center School? So at Center School we practice a number of safety drills. At our level it's a lot of the responsibility on the staff because we're the ones that are leading the children given their age, whereas at upper level they might have more uh, independence with such actions. Mm -hmm. But having us practice those drills, whether it's a weather drill, a fire drill, a lockdown drill, children become accustomed to that as practice and the way we go about it it's um, part of a routine this is what we do if we needed to evacuate the building if there was um, a smell an odor a fire this is how we would proceed and because mm -hmm. we practice those in such a well um, structured manner children move along great right with that with staff we've had updated um, trainings with an Alice program which is an enhanced lockdown with oh, yes. how would you um, respond to a situation. For our level, it's, it's empowering the staff with information so, to make 
better decisions mm -hmm. um, and make an informed decisions as best we can. Over this past year, we've um, installed door fobs. Most of the schools have them, actually all of them now. So it's a keyless entry system. Um, so even though we will have a future center school at a different site, we're still maintaining and adding to our current safety procedures at center school because mm -hmm. these are our young, this, these are um, quite quite valuable assets mm -hmm. in that 11 Ash Street. So we're very yeah. mindful of that. Well, you mentioned the Alice program, and we actually did a show on the Alice program. So any parents that are watching or teachers or students, if they want to learn more about that, they can go to the All About Hopkinton program list and see the Alice program is in there. Uh, so safety and security is of premier importance in all of our minds. Uh, and even when you look forth um, to developing the new building and the plans, mm -hmm. things that are on minds now were not years ago when you're looking at um, greenery and shrubbery. How does that enhance or inhibit mm -hmm. safety? You don't want to block views. You want to clear access. So things that years ago with building designs, I don't know if they were taken into account because it was, it, it was just a different world mm -hmm. at that time. So even looking at design features there, that's taken into account. Yeah. Well, in terms of building, you know, that's important that they factor those things in, but we all know that it's not the buildings that make the education yeah. system because Hopkinton has been ranked one of the top 10% of the districts in Massachusetts, and we know Center School has been <laughs> needing some refurbishing, or now we're getting a new school, so it hasn't been the building. It's the students, it's the teachers, it's the faculty. How do you maintain wonderful programs, that, and what are those programs at Center School that make it so successful? So you, um, I completely agree with you. It is the staff that makes Center School. When uh, the school is empty, you, you, over the summer as it is now, you tend mm -hmm. to notice some of the things that stand out more. However, when it is filled with students, with staff, those are not what's at the forefront. We have a dynamic staff. They are dedicated. They are continuously improving their craft. We have a number of teachers that are attending workshops and classes. So my job is to foster their learning, not only student learning, but how do I best support staff so that we have that professional workforce that's ready to meet the demands and needs of today's students, which there is much more emphasis on the whole child than there was years ago. And what I mean by that is that we're not only looking at just performance on a reading or math test, but we're looking at what goes into the act of reading, what goes into problem solving, that critical thinking and social emotional learning, and making sure that we have that solid foundation. So in terms of programs, teachers will use, we have core programs that all classes implement. Mm -hmm. However, based on student needs, teachers will adjust their practice and I think that's the key is we're doing a better job of meeting individual needs and continuously learning and feeding our professional needs as well so that we can continue to strengthen and improve. Well, I know when my son was at center school many years ago, uh, he loved it, was very enthusiastic about school and how do you keep that enthusiasm going, I guess. Uh, it sounds like uh, through the, maybe the individualized attention or some of these other things that are coming into play now, emotional development, uh, maybe those things are helping. I think so, and just uh, children feel great and safe at center school. And when mm -hmm. children feel good about their friends, they feel happy, they're much more open in, in position to learn. Things that we work on encouraging that, we have all school meetings throughout the year. Mm -hmm. We have a, a mascot, Cubby, um, which this year the HPTA oh, helped um, us purchase a Cubby. Um, I guess uniform or mascot. So Cubby made some appearances at the end of the year and it was wonderful. So capitalizing on their just joy and love of learning at school, we roll with it. These children are, um, they're at an age where they love school. It's exciting to them. They see the importance of it. And we make learning fun as well. Sure, there's going to be some things you might not really want to do, but it's, mm -hmm. it's balanced out with so many other great um, things that children choose to do. For example, one child might always want to go to the block area and never want to go to another area in kindergarten. We work on broadening those horizons so that we help expose children to a variety of things. So I think it's our response to children it's our warm greeting of them, which is part of our responsive classroom. When children enter the school grounds or classroom, they're greeted with a warm smile. We love to greet children by name. This is a place that they belong. This is their school. And I think that helps shine with their motivation and efforts. 
Well, I know that you're balancing all these responsibilities of being principal and everything, but that you also like to spend time with the students. And how do you communicate to somebody who's so young how to be successful in school? I mean, what do you tell them? What advice do you give them or how do you interact with them? Well, to, to interact with them, if I am visiting classrooms, I often get right down on the floor on their level. Um, there's a lot of that at Center School and it's a great place to be. When I talk to children about working hard or trying through something, I'll ask them questions. You know, what is it you're doing? Is something giving you um, difficulty? And you have a conversation here so that they're part of it. Mm -hmm. um, they'll often ask me, it's hard for them to conceptualize what it is my role is. You know, and I say my job is to make sure that we're learning, we're having fun, and we're safe. And that sums it up in pretty um, understandably um, basic terms for, for children. So when children are, we, we tell them that it's a learning process and they're mm -hmm. trying their best. Children might push on the playground because they want to join a game and they don't know how to interact, approach a group, so everything is a learning opportunity and what could we do next time? How could we make a different choice or a safer choice? And when an academic task is difficult for a child, working on breaking it down and taking them through, and then helping them get to that point because having that vested ownership for children just is so much more meaningful that they made that journey and it wasn't just told to them. So when I go around classrooms, I know children's names. I work on learning all of them. You've got quite a few to learn. And, <laughs> but, but you know, it makes them feel special and proud when I can greet them by name and that goes so far um, to know that I really care about how they are doing. So it, as much as we can, we we also reinforce that we're not perfect so if I make a mistake I model how to handle that there are times on the morning announcements I've said have a terrific Tuesday mm -hmm. and someone has let me know it is not Tuesday Mrs. Dubow and I <laughs> um, it might have been a Monday holiday or whatnot but you know how we also handle um, mistakes or when things don't go our way is mm -hmm. huge for children because the expectation that you're always going to be perfect is, is not realistic. So that's also a part of what we do at Central School that I really work on. Well, I'm glad to hear that students like the principals knowing their names these days, because when I was in school, if the principal knew your name, it was not for a good reason. <laughs> How has, uh, you've been a principal a couple years now in Center School, has the, how has it gone in terms of, was it everything you ex expected when you accepted the position? It has been wonderful. What's hard for me to believe is that this coming year will be my third school year in Hopkinton. It mm -hmm. has gone by incredibly fast, but also has been very busy with the building project, other things mm -hmm. we're working on, but so very rewarding. I, you know that um, things are working well when you start to dream of school as home, <laughs> because um, you, this I in this short amount of time, I, I feel as though I can consider Hopkinton my home away from home. You know, coming into a new district, not knowing parents, the staff, and the community, mm -hmm. that was a different feeling for me because I'm so used to having that sense of um, connection, and very quickly that was established here at Hopkinton, and I think that's one of the strengths of the district and why we're in that top ranking is the strong sense of community. Um, I feel as though I've been here for many more years despite um, the upcoming year is my third. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> and, but um, there must be some challenges and some difficulties in being a principal. You want to talk to any of those? Or? Sure. There are, there are the things that we control, things that um, we identify based on our district strategic plan, what are our school goals to work on. Mm -hmm. What's challenging is then when you have other goals or mandates that are pressed upon schools and schools across the state and finding a way to have that mesh and how do we um, accomplish what's, what's required of us. For example, there might be a mandate for a certain um, training for teachers, English language learners. The, the, just teachers across the state are now becoming trained, required to be trained, um, and the state's currently providing that, but in the future they won't. Mm -hmm. And as a school and district, we're challenged that all of our teachers receive that training. Um, other assessments or documentation that is something that we might do, but whereas it's, um, again, as I say, a mandate, the, the how and the why might not always be as timely as we would like and making sure that we are up to date with um, all of our requirements there, but that's every mm -hmm. school, um, not unique to Hawkington as um, 
education moves forward in the state and then across the country is satisfying your district initiative and priorities as well as those of others. And often they mingle, sometimes they don't, and that's where the challenge is. Well, we talk about stress on the students, but there's a lot of stress on you and the teachers and all the faculty there. Um, there's so much, so many new things that come up, and I guess we're in the couple years now of Common Core. The, we're one of the states that are implementing the Common Core program and all those changes that come along. Um, so teachers are always learning too, not just the students. And we will always continue to learn. If you, we ever um, consider that we are done, mm -hmm. we're not doing our job because there's always going to be new ways to approach things, a better way to approach things, ways to improve your practice. So with that, I think is that um, when you talk about the pressure, I think a lot of accountability. So accountability, it's a good thing that we ensure that we're doing our jobs, it's the balancing of it, making sure that we are focused on what the priorities are. And when we are looking at all of the mandates and requirements coming back to that child, that five, six-year-old child, mm -hmm. Are they learning? Are they establishing that solid base? Are they feeling confident? That's what it all comes down to. So that, I feel, is my job, is to try to help filter some of the other pressure so that teachers are able to focus on their jobs. And they most certainly feel the pressure of accountability as well. But how is it that we maintain that wonderful, happy learning place, mm -hmm. um, which then it, your return is twofold. Now let's see, I don't know if I recall this correctly or not, but we have all day kindergarten now, right? Yes, and how we long do. has that been in place? A couple years now? Or this past year was our first year. Oh, so first? this past okay. year we had free full day kindergarten for all, no longer the tuition, no longer the lottery. So we mm -hmm. had 10 kindergarten classes and it was it, it really was wonderful. Something that um, I think a number of families were concerned about was that the pressure of kindergarten would be too much, yeah. that almost the upper levels would be pushed down. And if anything, what it provides us is the opportunity to spend more time learning and applying skills. And our half-day teachers this year shared they really got to know their children. As opposed to having 40 to 45 children, they had approximately 20. They really knew them and were better able. They felt that they were a better teacher to those children. Mm -hmm. And if someone needed a little bit more time on an activity or task, they weren't pressured because we're leaving in two hours and we have snack and then we have music. They had time to allow children to, to explore and apply skills. And that's huge. So it was the unhurried nature of it. Um, for some children who had not been at a previous program, the transition, you are somewhere for the day. Mm -hmm. However, many of our children are coming from full day programs, be it a daycare based at a work mm -hmm. center or a preschool that is um, partial or, or full day. So it went, it went very well. And teachers at the end of the year, when they reflected back on student growth and learning, mm -hmm. having that approach children made tremendous gains and that was so rewarding for the teachers to see because also they're adjusting their schedules, their um, planning to best meet the whole day needs. Um, so that was that was rewarding and well, validating. It sounds like overall it was a good thing to do then. Uh, you it's know been what? successful. It, it was successful, yes. How about the forthcoming, um, forthcoming school year? Are there any new programs or what's your focus now as we get into starting another school year? So starting the school year, things that we are looking at is we're starting to taper. Quite often I've had the um, comment of uh, when I say I'm the principal of, you know, preschool K-1, mm -hmm. oh, you don't have the testing, you know, almost the implication that it's a, it's a piece of cake and we're just having fun. Mm -hmm. We do have our accountability measures, their district measures, and our own personal measures for students to have that growth and success. So as teachers have been looking at development um, in academic areas, we're really looking at, okay, how best do we meet those needs? Now that we're gathering this information, what do we want for next instructional steps for this child? So that's part of our school improvement plan, and that will be a focus for us is um, how best do we meet those, those needs? Which we're doing a great job, we're in mm -hmm. that top 10, but we always strive to do even, even better and improve our practice. So it goes along with professional development for teachers, instructional practices, and what's wonderful is that shared sense of responsibility with staff. Mm -hmm. Years ago, teachers, um, the mentality was that this was your classroom, you were responsible for it, and that was it. But we, in terms of effective distribution of staff and resources, we're doing more work together so that we have professional learning communities, teachers are discussing 
lesson planning, curriculum and assessment, what to do. It's almost think of a work environment with a little um, you know, research group, a um, strategic planning group. We're doing that on how best to meet our student needs. And that's a wonderful thing to happen. Well, a good support structure because there's so much pressure, uh, you know, on teachers these days to keep up with everything, all the changes and, you know, the professional development. Uh, it, it, people used to think that, oh, teachers have it so easy. They don't. <laughs> they don't anymore, that's for sure. There's so much going on there. Um, what uh, kind of support do you and your team need from parents in the community? One of the greatest supports is communication. When uh, What's wonderful is if families have a question, ask the question. Mm -hmm. um, don't hesitate to call, send an email. I've met parents over the summer when I first came and that was a wonderful experience. And I think for families and community members to know that anytime you have a question or something you're wondering about, just ask. And so often, um, if, if I have a question, and it might even be about um, what time lunch might be, something small, but mm -hmm. yet it's huge to that parent because they're trying to plan um, their child's day um, in terms of packing lunch and packing snack. They're so appreciative of the response that I'm trying to work on instilling with them, ask if you have a question. When we have events, if you're able to attend, that's wonderful. I know HCAM was able to tape our Flag Day ceremony and that mm -hmm. was terrific to share with um, the community. And attending events, reading our newsletters, I just, that involvement piece, which will look different for mm -hmm. all different families. We have families with working parents, families that um, have a parent that's able to participate more in school. There's ways to be in involved in school even if you're not physically there. Mm -hmm. um, so I just encourage that to all families is, you know, your involvement um, can be a variety of levels and means and we welcome that. So that's something that I worked on when I first came to Center School is making it um, increased in terms of the community involvement and just welcomeness of it. Some of our challenges are there's not much parking. Um, so that, I mean, we, we have to some, fix that some, in a couple right. of years. So in terms of welcoming families, we try yeah. to be creative in how we can do that in a manner that um, does have that outreach with the, with the community. Do you still use volunteers in the classrooms? Are there, is there a good amount of volunteers that help out? We do. We have classroom um, volunteers. We have volunteers who uh, support our library. We have a lot of mm -hmm. books that children love to take out, check out, and help return them and shelve them. We have volunteers that work um, in an office um, support manner. And what I mean by that is uh, we have something called Time for Teachers, and the HPTA organizes this. If, uh, for our staff members, if I can have them working in those professional learning communities and um, collaborating with each other, that's my preference, not mm -hmm. copying and laminating, although that stuff might need to be done. So we have parents that bind books, photocopy, laminate, which frees up our staff to focus more on that curriculum assessment and instruction. So that's a win-win there. Um, there are a variety of ways to volunteer. So it may be in your child's class, it may be elsewhere in center school. And for those of us that maybe don't have kids in school anymore, can we still volunteer? <laughs> you certainly may. We, our volunteers are have a Cori completed, so that's that criminal offender record information system. Yeah, the Cori background. Yeah, yep. um, always gotta have the background. If you have one on file with the school, it is good at any school. So mm -hmm. if um, you have a senior, if you have a third grader, fourth grader, it, it's also acceptable at center school and um, you would just check if you weren't sure if it was up to date or whatnot. Yeah. But we would most certainly, we uh, readers to come in to read, support writing, I would find a place for you. Well, and the Corey, the background check, another, of course, very important thing yes. is when, as we talked about safety and security in the schools. You wanna make sure anybody that's coming on the premises has been adequately checked out and. So for quarries, I have a quarry completed, the cafeteria, mm -hmm. the bus drivers, anyone that works with children has a quarry completed and um, my fingerprints, I've gone through that process um, because that's another level that has been added for school employees is background fingerprint checks. The fingerprint check. hmm. Well, as we wrap up, is there any last words you'd like to share with us either about the school plans for the new school or the new coming new year in September for Center School? Yeah. Well, I can just say we are looking forward to a wonderful year. It certainly should be an exciting year for Center School. We welcome a new um, grade level class of, and I, uh, 
maybe 2028, I think, is the grade level, um, the year of graduation that will be joining us. Oh, my um, gosh. I can't even this, put my head around um, that. 2028. 2028. <laughs> they shall be here very shortly. So that is an exciting part of Center School is knowing that we are beginning their school career, um, their kindergarten career. That is wonderful. A lot of exciting work to be had with the building project. So mm -hmm. um, if, if the community is able to keep um, up to date with that information, that would be wonderful. That also is great support. But it's not only for the children that are here now, it's for the future children and for the future of the mm -hmm. town, really. Lauren, thank you so much for being here. This is all good information, and I wish you the best in the new school year. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. For more information about the new elementary school and the center school plans, uh, watch for the website located on the bottom of the screen. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me and stay tuned for more episodes of Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. I don't want another drinker in my life. My pastor suggested Al-Anon Family Groups. Are you troubled by someone else's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an Al-Anon Family Group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. I'm Dr. Michael Berry. For many medical problems, there's more than one appropriate option for testing or treatment. Determining which option to choose may be one of the most important decisions a patient will ever make. Yet too often, Patients make decisions without a thorough understanding of their options. Shared decision making can help. It allows patients and their providers to decide together based on the best scientific evidence and the patient's values and preferences. The Informed Medical Decisions Foundation has worked with a company called Health Dialogue to develop more than 30 programs on various aspects of medical care. These programs help patients work with their providers to make care decisions mindful of what patients most care about. Among our programs are those for cardiovascular disease, chronic conditions, breast cancer, mental health, end-of-life care, and screening and testing. I encourage you to learn more about how to get health care that's right for you by visiting our website.